everybody. Uh, I'm sorry that I missed you on Monday. I was uh, helping my mom and my dad, actually my brother and several of our family members um, came and uh, were helping our parents because of, um, well, they had a roof that was rotting out and on an old farmhouse. And it was actually on the garage, but anyway, so we were out taking care of our folks and had a great morning, but um, I ended up being away and out of uh, access to internet and just busy and so that's why I missed you on Monday but good to be back good to see you um, well actually again I'm not seeing you but uh, hopefully uh, this is a good time of encouragement for you as it is for me at times I was wrestling this this morning with you know, I was actually reading through Psalms and was wrestling with Psalms and um, two things one I forgot kind of where we left off because it's been a couple of days and but secondly, I was really wrestling with the um, idea that we talked about last night in our Wednesday night service with Stephen Brodke and I in James chapter 4, where w w this whole idea of quarrels and fighting happening within the church um, and, and the, the, the challenge, the reality of knowing God and, and how that impacts our relationship with him and, and all of those things. So uh, good morning, you guys. Good to see you. Thanks for, for jumping on here and joining me this morning. Um, I, so I was wrestling with this idea of knowing God and how that reflects in our lives, how it affects the way that we live, how it affects the way that we, we respond to God, we respond to others, all of those things. And um, something curious grabbed me uh, today, and it's out of the book of Jonah. And so I want to turn back with me to Jonah. I want to look at something. Um, in Jonah, and it, we need to recognize elements of uh, j just how this affects us, how the reality of, um, of the human heart, the condition of our human heart affects us in our response to God. And, um, because, you know, as you, as you go through different passages of Scripture and, and we think about the principles of biblical truth, we could look at that and say, man, if I really knew God, in fact, I've even been saying that, I've even been wrestling with that in my own heart, that, I, God, I want to know you more. I want to know your character and who you are. And I think that that's right. And I think that that's exactly what we're supposed to do. And it's what God's called us to do. And it's actually what he's, it's what he's working in us. It's, it's, it's exactly what he is um, desiring of us to experience and to know uh, and, and to be in relationship with him. And so how is it possible um, in that case for, um, let's take, for example, Jonah, and we're going to look at this, but for him to respond in the way that he did. I, wanna, I want you to see how he responded. Um, we know the story, right? Jonah is uh, one of the great prophets of, of the Old Testament. He is, uh, Jesus quotes him. Um, because of what he went through and, um, and, and the whole thing, the, the miraculous sign, the, the, the prophecy of Jonah that, was, that happened because of his response to God um, and, and being sent to Nineveh to testify against the sinfulness, the wickedness that was within that town. And um, what does Jonah do? He flees from the Lord. He actually runs the other direction. God says, go this way. And Jonah goes, yeah, I'm going that way. And, and, you know, we look at that and we think, oh, Jonah, you know, that's terrible. And um, it was. It, it was. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's not. But what's really interesting, what really grabbed my heart this morning as I was thinking about knowing God, as I was thinking about how often in my own life I don't love people the way that, uh, the way that God loved me. I don't respond to God and to his word and to others in the church in obedience as God's called me to do and as, as Jesus has set an example for us to do. Um, I, I, I was really wrestling with that today and this passage jumped out to me. So follow with me, read along with me in Jonah chapter 4, um, verses 1 through 4. Now, you need to know um, that we're in chapter 3. Uh, in chapter 3, Jonah ends up going back. So he's in the belly. of the, he, he actually runs. He jumps on a boat. God chases him on the boat. It's going to capsize. It's going to go down. The sailor go through this process. Jonah somehow is down in the boat sleeping. Um, and the, 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 the sailors are like, what are you doing? And um, Jonah you know, admits to the whole thing that he defied God. Um, and, he, and he says, instead of repenting, he says, throw me overboard, so kill me. And they do. And the waves stop, and the sailors worship God. The sailors go, 
this is the one true God. And, and so they worship God. And Jonah swallowed by a fish. In the belly of the whale, chapter 2, he's talking about the misery and all of the, the, the horrible things. He's quoting Psalms. And he goes through this whole, this whole prayer um, and all kinds of debate around that. Not a big deal. We get to chapter 3. Jonah comes out. He goes in. He does his thing where he uh, gives a, probably one of the most compassionate um, uh, 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 evangelical gospel presentations that you can possibly have, repent or die. And I can only imagine with Jonah's attitude that he did it with great fervor and, and compassion for the people of Nineveh. We get to verse 6 of chapter 3, and we actually see that Nineveh responds. They repent, and they cry out to the Lord, and... Um, with the idea of who knows, God may turn and relent and turn from His fierce anger, so that we may not perish. And when God saw what they did, He turned uh, how they turned from evil. God relented of the disaster that He had said He would do to them, and He did not do it. That's where we end in chapter three as we move into chapter four, and this is Jonah's response. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry, and he prayed to the Lord and said, "O oh Lord, is not this what I said when I went?" When I was yet in my country, that is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Therefore, now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? So let's wrestle with this for a minute. Jonah, who is told by God, to go and preach against this nation, testifies here in chapter 4. He says, God, I knew you. I know your character, that you are gracious, merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from disaster. I knew this about you. I knew who you were. I know who you are. I know your character, your nature. I know all of this about you. And because of that, I'm going to go the other direction because I, I, I so hate Nineveh. I, w whatever his bias was towards Nineveh, whatever, whatever that was, he knew that if they repented, God would forgive them. Now, there's, bigger, there's a big picture in this. Jonah, as a prophet, as a sign to Israel, we know that God did that. We know that God used his prophets to demonstrate to Israel their own rebellion, their own hardness of heart, their own resistance to his word, their own um, lack of knowledge, the adultery, the idolatry. All of that stuff is exposed throughout the prophets, all, you know, all throughout the Old Testament. And all of it, at some level, reflects the gracious, kind, merciful, steadfast love that God has for his people. And it's very interesting. I think it's incredible because Jonah nearly quotes Moses's introduction to God out of Exodus 34, right? One of my favorite passages, Exodus 34. Um, let's see, it's in verse uh, verse 6. Exodus 34, 6. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God, of, a, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thoughts, forgiving iniquity and, trans, and the transgression and sin but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children uh, to the third and fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And so here in, in, in Jonah chapter 4, you actually have Jonah describing who he knew God to be and saying, because of that, I knew how you would repent. I, I knew that you would relent if they repented. I knew that, that if you saw their hearts that because of who you are, you would relent from bringing disaster. And, and he ran from God. And so I was what I was wrestling with this morning is uh, there's times when I want to blame my disobedience. I want to blame my, my um, wrestle with sin, this battle that is waging within me. And, and the times that I fail, the times that I, I like, like Paul says in, in Romans chapter 7, that I'm doing the things that I know I, that I don't want to do, and, I, and I'm not doing the things that I know that I should do, the things that I want to do. So when I'm in that battle and I'm in that struggle and, and the tension is there and the, the, the war is waging between my, 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 the spirit, the, the, the law of the spirit and, and the law of the flesh and, and all this stuff that, that Paul talks about in Romans and James is referencing in, in chapter 4, when I'm in the midst of that, I tend to want to look at that and say, well, it's, you know, it's because I need to know the Lord better. 
it's because I need, you know, if I knew more about him, if I had a better view of him, if, if, if I really did all this. And yet you see Jonah who knew the Lord, who knew about his character so much that, that he was so convinced of the character of God that he knew he would forgive Nineveh. He would relent and he would, he would forgive, he would forgive him and, and he wouldn't destroy him. And because of that, Jonah disobeyed. So at some level, because he knew God's character, Jonah disobeyed. And as I was wrestling with that today, I thought to myself, man, is that, is that sometimes how we respond to God? Because we know he's gracious, we know he's long-suffering, we know he's full of mercy, we know all of this stuff, that we end up in that, um, almost a lot, a lot like the deception that we talked about last night, that that we somehow think that we've got our fire insurance, so we're good. We're, we're not again. We're not going to engage in the battle. We're not going to actually. Um, we're not going to actually engage in the in in the fight in the war that's being waged between our flesh, the members of our body, and our soul. Or are we more like Jonah at times, where when we see God exercising forgiveness for others, we become angry, and and even to the point where Jonah uh, several times he says he'd, he'd rather die than live to see. Uh, Nineveh redeemed to see Nineveh the people of Nineveh forgiven by God and so I'm wrestling with that in my own heart saying is is this really am, am I somehow missing the point in the forgiveness in the in the repentance in the surrender in the dying to myself in the the picking up my cross in in following him daily um because even Jonah, knowing God and knowing his character, rebelled because he knew his character and he knew who he was. So I still think that we need to know him. I still think that we need to seek him. I, I, I still believe that that's what we're called to do. We're called to follow him. But I guess part of what I'm wrestling with is, is to say that I don't, I don't think that that should be my excuse or that should be somehow... A, a, a pass or or the the reason that I that I um, hang on the blackness of my heart or the the tendency for me to to lose the battle lose a battle in the war against the flesh um, as in, as opposed uh, in, in, instead of instead of coming up with an excuse or 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 redirecting that and and saying man I could maybe I could just do this or maybe I could Maybe I could, uh, you know, if I get to know the Lord better, maybe if I read my Bible more, if I pray more, if I, if I gather other people around me, then, then this, you know, this will go away. And um, I, I think the reality of our hearts, the reality of the sin that, that we wrestle with, it's because it's an internal battle. It's because it's, it's literally warfare that's happening in our hearts. And way too often, I, I want the easy way out of that. I want it. I want it just to be resolved. I don't want to have to battle. I don't want to have to to get up every day and lay down, you know, lay down my preferences, lay down my desires, and, and willingly pick up the cross. And as Stefan said last night, to literally be a, a strategist in war, to intentionally, to 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 aggressively, to purposefully uh, 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 wage this war against the sinful desires of my own flesh. I guess maybe I'd, I'd like to just be lazy and, and, and or I'd like the microwave version of that. And I think that's the battle. I think ultimately that's really the, where the struggle's at. And so, yes, we need to seek the Lord. And I, and I believe that that's absolutely imperative. And, and, and having time in the Word and being in prayer and being, you know, getting people around us that are going to help us do that. But I don't think it's going to make the battle easier in the sense that, there won't still be warfare. There won't still be a, a, a conflict or, or a battle over my flesh, be, between my flesh and my soul. Um, it's not going to alleviate that. Um, because it appears that, you know, Paul references running the race and preparing like an athlete. And, and that even at the end of his life, he says, not that I've already attained to this or think that, you know, think that I've already attained, but I press on I, uh, towards the mark that he, he puts all of the past behind him and he sets his eyes towards the, 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 the things that are in front of him and towards the goal to take hold of that. And so there's this active, intentional engagement that's happening all the time. 
And even Jonah, knowing who God was, when God gave him his directive as a prophet, because he knew him, he ran the other way. I don't know. Would, would we do that? I mean, let's take any of the, any of the people that you disagree with in your life. To, to do politics, do, do um, um, religious stuff, do neighborhood stuff, do family stuff, whatever that... Would, would, we, would we look at those individuals? Would we, would we engage with them, even those in the church who we disagree with? Um, and if God said, go and, go and address them, go and apologize, go and uh, uh, share with them this passage of Scripture, go and be a friend, go and listen, go and care for them, go and ask forgiveness from them. Um, uh, go, you know, wh whatever it might be that God might ask of us in response to individuals in the church or in response to his word or in response to conflict or any of those things in the church. Are, are there moments in our lives that we know what God's asking us to do because we know him, that we would walk the other way because we're, we're bent on our own desires, we're bent on our selfishness, on we're, we're addicted to the worship of our flesh to the point where we would, knowing God, turn the other direction and, and run. We would go the other way. Jonah is the perfect example of this. It was actually the picture of Israel at the time. They had prophets who were coming, and when, when God showed up and his, and his word was, was spoken, they rejected it. And, and one, of the great contra, uh, one of the great confrontations of Jonah was that the Ninevites, the most evil, one of, one of the wicked nations of that time uh it, it was just horrible um from in in their practices and in their in their uh their uh, uh worship their secular worship and the temples and, and the gods that they served all the stuff that was going on there was just wicked and evil and yet when the word of god was spoken when the prophet of god spoke to them they responded they repented but the nation of israel never did And so you have this great confrontation, this great uh, rebuke against the nation of Israel, the people that were called his own, that, that knew God, um, and they didn't respond to the prophet, but, the, but the, the, the Gentiles did, the heathens did. And Jonah's heart, Jonah's own bias, his own prejudice against the Ninevites was exposed in that moment. And, and he ran the other direction, which is one of the great beautiful pictures of, of what Jesus did and how the prophecy of Jonah is fulfilled in Christ because God, Jesus willingly went to the cross while we were his enemies, while we were against him. He, knowing the will of the Father, followed through with it, knowing that it would cost him his life, that he would suffer immensely. And that was... That that's we reap the benefits of that, and and what an amazing reality that is! What an amazing picture that that is for us to to wrestle with and to to, to put our heads around that that's that is um, the the example of of Jesus is to knowing the will of the Father, knowing who He was, being at one with Him. He responded even though it cost Him dearly, and and how different is our response to that at times? How different should it be than what it is? You know, how do I respond to people? And, and how am I responding to the word of the Lord? And how am I going to engage, even this week, to say, God, I, I, I know who you are. I know how my sin, it affects our relationship. And so I want to, I want to get in, I want to stand up and be in the battle. I, I want to engage this. I want to, I want to go and, and meet with the people that I have offenses with. I want to go and deal with people that I've wounded and that I've hurt and, and make those things right. Um, I want to address my own failures and my own weaknesses. And, and I hate doing that. You guys, I hate it. I don't like, I don't like sharing all my flaws and, and my failures, which I don't share all of them. But, I mean, I, I don't like sharing any of them. I, I, I would... My, my preference would be if if, if I if God would allow me I'd, I'd love for you all to think that I'm a super spiritual guy and never have any mistakes that'd be a lie and so there, therefore I'd be following Satan again I'd be I'd be following his pattern of lying I know that that's not what we're doing um, but the battle's real 
that that war that that is being waged for our soul in the battle between the flesh and the word of god the spirit of god um Romans 7, go and, go and read Romans 7, but that war is, is active, and it's constant, and it's something that we need to engage in, and, uh, and unlike, I, I really think that we need to recognize in our own hearts when we're responding like Jonah, we know him, we have his word, we have a spirit living within us if we're, his, if we're believers. And yet we will still choose to sin or we'll allow our biases, our preferences, our, our prejudices um, with people or with, with uh, politics or with religion or with whatever it is, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and we'll allow that to at times be more important to take the place of God in our lives and our, and our responses reveal that truth. Our responses reveal... Um, where that reality aligns with our own hearts so that's my challenge that's what i was wrestling with this morning was just man am, am i at times knowing the character of god willfully going the other way because i know what he would want i know how he would respond to those people or that situation or i know how he'd respond to me and rather than dealing with my stuff rather than admitting that he's right and admitting that that I, I, I gave up in the battle, in, in that battle, I, I forfeited, I gave up, and, and I, let the, I let my flesh win. Um, is that what maybe where we're at at times, and is that really what's happening in my heart, even knowing God, that I'm responding like Jonah and saying, God, I know what you've asked me to do, but I know how you're going to respond, and I really don't want to be involved. And then we just, we unplug and surrender to the wrong thing. I think at times that is what happens in my life. And I wanted to wrestle with that with you today. Because we're called to be in the war. We are in a war. We're in a battle. And it's a spiritual battle. Ephesians Ephesians 6 talks about it. It's not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and, and powers. And it's, it's against the, it, it is a significant battle. And yeah, I get it. Our members are flesh and blood, but but there's a spiritual aspect of that warfare. There's there's something in our flesh that fights the the spirit of God, and we're engaged in that battle, and it's significant. My prayer is that you would actually, as I desire to do, that we would get up every morning and say, "I'm going in. I'm standing, and I'm taking." this seriously and I'm, I'm going to engage so my hope is I, I hope something about in this was encouraging to you today please please uh, um, get on your knees before the Lord cry out to him lean on him ask him for the wisdom that you don't have be honest with him tell him tell him he already knows where your heart's at you and I need to get you and I need to deal with this we need to be able to say God I'm not I don't like it this morning I'm not interested in what you want to do I I'm tired. I'm 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 worn out. I'm frustrated. I'm really, wh whatever that is, whatever wherever you're at, or joyful, whatever it is, where your heart's at, share that with the Lord. Ask Him for His direction. Trust that He's going to show up, and um, watch and see what He does, because He is faithful, and He loves us, and He wants what's best for us, and He's merciful and gracious full of steadfast love, relenting from bringing disaster. And he, he wants to transform us into what he's called us to be, what he's created us to be. Um, and it is his desire. And if we, if we would surrender to that and seek him, I believe that although things will be tough, although there, things will, be very, will at times be very hard, and although we'll be engaged in this battle probably for our entire lives, he will be faithful, and he will show up, and he will provide what we need. God bless you guys. Uh, we'll see you next week sometime. Have a great day chasing the Lord, following him, pursuing him, seeking him first in everything that you do. God bless.